I bet you thought we were done with this franchise, didn't you? As I was combing over to make sure I covered everything, I actually found that there are still quite a few variants I really haven't given attention to. So let's get to it. These particular necromorphs exist as an answer to anyone hiding in areas where perhaps normal sized necromorphs cannot reach or fit through the vent, or maybe even the corruption may take too long. They specifically make their way through the septic systems of colonies and ships, making them absolutely lethal should you be hanging out in the bathroom, tea posing, singing a Gregorian chant. Alright, so my ticket into the cool crowd with the youth by using an outdated meme has been set, so let's get to two very similar necromorphs that fall under the category of Swarm. On the Ishimura, these guys are simply an afterthought of the marker. You wouldn't be wrong in thinking that they are just really made over the leftover material, and they appear to be the intestinal tracks of the pregnant necromorphs. Now I have covered the pregnants pretty extensively, so if you'd like to see a video over that, there should be a card at the top. Anyhow, the Swarm is usually housed within the stomach pouch of a pregnant, and upon expiration of the pregnant, or should the pouch become too damaged, they will begin to swarm towards Isaac, hence the name. They move rather slowly when approaching their target, and are extremely weak however. Really only having to be crushed by Isaac to remove them, you'd imagine it would be pretty easy to get rid of them, right? Well, there are hidden parts on their body that they actually use in the attack that may be why they are even able to overpower anybody utilizing rig armor. Upon looking at the swarm from Dead Space, it's easy to think that because they reside in the intestinal tract of the pregnant, they are actually, once again, composed of the actual lining and organs themselves. But would you be surprised to know that they are actually hands? Well, actually more likely a combination of metacarpal, phalanges, and intestines. It may seem weird, but bear with me. Take a look at a pregnant. The arms that we see are not so much arms, but the new shoulder blades produced by the mutation of the body. The original person's arms are fused to the sides of the body with the hands located around the mid-abdomen area. This lines the hands up to be essentially deconstructed down down and the bones reused elsewhere. This is perfect for making the swarm. Taking a look at their body, slowing them down using stasis, the feet that they crawl around on are quite clearly still fingers. The cartilage would still be in place as well as the tendons allowing them to move. I bring up the side note that if these were actually just intestinal material, then their movement would look like really kind of closer to a worm crawling across the ground because bones are integral to movement as they can be manipulated and pushed against to actually move the creature. The swarm use this to make their way towards their targets. Another reason that this actually does appear to be something else besides just the intestinal lining of the person is the makeup and coloring of the actual swarm itself. Their body appears to be composed of a sickly gray color. While the skin of the pregnant necromorph is usually yellow due to what can be associated with fatty tissue and the yellow bacteria, what's left of the skin concerning on the face or even some of the arms is kind of gray in color. So it can't be surmised that based on this that the skin coloring is what's left over of this person. Another thing to note about the body is how the back end of the swarm appears definitely to look like a wrist. The fingers are at the front pulling it along, which would make sense, but on an anatomical level, the back end would be much more raised. So this thing actually looks like the thing from the Adams family, albeit a much more aggressive and horrifying version, if you can believe it. Well, what happens when they reach their target? Well, a lot of people may not know this, but even in these creatures, the yellow bacteria we see throughout the game exists in some quantity. Think of it as little carriers bent on being released as a last resort to convert a host. They will lunge at Isaac, and if you slow it down and really look, much like how the infectors can convert adults in seconds to necromorphs via a proboscis, so too can these guys. On the underside of them exists a chute that comes out and is strong enough to pierce rig armor being worn by a person. Upon this happening, they will inject this yellow bacteria into the person. Now, there is something called a viral load or bacterial load. In this case, it's a bacterial load, but essentially it is the required amount of bacteria to infect a media. From my understanding, this many are created as if it were just one or two, they would not be able to inject enough bacteria to overwhelm the host's immune system or body. But with this many in place, it's a quick enough process to make it viable. Again, the yellow bacteria is quite effective at converting even game-ended individuals into necromorphs. So should the bacterial load be enough and they have pierced the rig, then they can easily convert Isaac. And do so! When they begin to attack Isaac, he will begin ripping them off, but should he be unsuccessful, the bacterial load will overwhelm his body. This
This will more than likely stop his bodily functions, causing him to drop and invariably become a necromorph shortly afterwards. Now, the swarm does have another version, which takes place on Tau Volantis. These creatures are presumably not made out of human components, but instead out of the native population. The thing about this is, though, larger bodies, larger necromorph pieces. These particular types will scuttle at a much quicker rate around the scaf complex, seeking out those who they may devour. But what are we looking at, and how do they differ? Well, first and foremost, these creatures are extremely adept at locomotion. And this would be massively important when dealing with active soldiers who are sprinting or quick swimmers concerning the natives. Catching up to them was important as the necromorphs were dealing with large open areas. Liken them to spiders if you needed another reason to hate things that skitter. They will move towards the living and those who have already committed the not alive. And here's how they separate themselves from the swarm on the Ishimura. Instead of injecting a proboscis into the host and converting via yellow liquid, these creatures will choose to burrow through the skin, muscle, and bone to reach the internal and vital areas of the body. Now there is nothing quite like going to the source, so this quickly causes a mutation in the host, getting them back up on their feet, even if they've been gone for a very long time. But they can also convert those that are already living, but we will talk about that momentarily. The overall look of the swarm on Tau Volantis is very similar to how they move, very spider-like. However, they really only have about four legs in total, so they're not really a true spider, because somebody would definitely bring that up in the comments. The body is spider-shaped without the eyes. What appears to be a small mouth is on the front, which would aid in burrowing, and larger sacs sits on the back of this creature, which here I would imagine a larger concentration of yellow fluid is housed. Interestingly though, despite the arachnid characteristics, it's more likened to a cephalopod. It is able to squeeze and contort its body into small places like cracks and holes. The ability to do this is very helpful when dealing with smaller prey such as humans, which brings us into how does it affect a human when it gets inside. And for this, we turn to what happens to Isaac or Carver should they be overwhelmed. First thing we see is when Isaac is attacked is that much like the swarm on the Ishimura, he will begin grabbing them. They are also fairly weak, so he can crush them with just his hands. But should one make it under his helmet, it will immediately start trying to enter his face. Again, much like a cephalopod, this creature is able to compress its body. However, upon entering the esophagus, this shape is lost or perhaps it has reached its maximum ability to compress, as Isaac will cough up quite a bit of blood. When this happens, he will fall and then get back up with yellow foam emitting from his mouth and yellow eyes. This conversion is extraordinarily quick when it happens, so let's discuss what happens based upon this scene. When entering the body, first, the esophagus would be completely destroyed. However, the neck is not that larger. Due to that, I doubt the swarm goes much deeper than about halfway down the throat. I don't know if it's how I wrote this, but this whole process is like weird vibes, man. Anyways, instead, it would more than likely burrow its way to the brainstem. Here, it would have access to the spine and the cerebral spinal fluid. With this, it would be more than likely injecting the yellow bacteria directly into the brain. It would then spread out and bypass any immune system kind of checks and balances in place due to the blood-brain barrier where the immune system doesn't really get into the brain. This is how it is able to so quickly take over the host, but what do I base this on? Am I just a madman spouting out complete nonsense? Well, believe it or not, I'm not. If we take a look at how the infector works, the brain is the main player. Upon the proboscis penetrating the skull of a person and injecting the fluid into the brain of them, it's almost an immediate mutation. Based on this, the swarm of Talvalan adopted this method more than likely due to the size of the creatures that they were infecting. Once again, the Tau Volantians have something called indeterminate growth. They're essentially, they can grow up to about the size of skyscrapers, at least from what we've seen in game. They could be even larger than that. So with that, the amount of dilution the yellow bacteria would have to go through to get through a body like that would be astronomical, and it may just take entirely too long. So this makes sense. The Ishimura also had guidance of a hive mind, so odds are the creatures were not as refined or effective, believe it or not, so the theory of dilution concerning the yellow bacteria was not as understood by the necromorphs. However, on Tal Volantis, a brethren moon exists above the planet, and despite it being frozen prior to this, uh, I suppose it, you could call it terraforming, enough of the species was converted to form this moon. As such, the necromorphs would have become more effective at converting the population and much more specialized. This may also be why we see such a difference in the morphology of the swarm from the Ishimura versus Tal Volantis, and why we actually do not really see any sort of swarm on Tideman State until more specialized necromorphs begin popping up. It all goes back to the intelligence shown by the hive mind versus no hive mind, such as with just the ubermorph versus a brother and moon. Swarmers become much more specialized and adept at their job as the overall intelligence of the necromorphs increase. But anyways, that's gonna do it for me, guys. I hope everyone enjoyed. I've actually found more to do concerning this franchise, and I would love to say the name of it, but YouTube's really been all about that demonetization lately, so this is actually a test to see if what I'm saying is actually effective 
affecting the algorithm. Anyways, leave a like if you enjoyed as it helps the video and subbing is a great way to stay up to date if you want to keep up with the channel. I will drop my Twitsphere, Discord, Patreon links, and merch links if anybody's interested in that. And I would like to thank my patrons as well. It's Not A Spoon, Joseph Givens, Freedom Units 44, and The Lone Titan. Thank you guys for your awesome support. And for the rest of you guys, I really do appreciate it, especially since YouTube appears to be on a spree right now, just demonetizing everything front, left, and center. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see y'all in the next one.